So I don't uh, largely use many technical indicators at all. Um, I use volume, on balance volume, where equities and commodities are concerned. We battle to get proper volume, obviously on foreign exchange, although you can get a guide on brokers um, volume. Um, a Bollinger Band, I don't need anymore, but I think for people that are contemplating any volatility-based strategy, we'll get something from that. Um, I don't trade it as the Bollinger Band is meant to be traded, though, you know, you buy the touch or the low. I treat it as an indi uh, as a, as a easy highlighter of where the market has gone quiet and where it's been expansive. Um, so I don't trade it, I use it as informational only. Um, for my other trade, so it's indicative. Some things that tie in, some people will say average true range, quite interesting. Um, if you have any doubt about what the trend is, I mean, sure, throw a moving average on it, but don't trade a moving average strategy. Generally, they're um, largely being debunked as being long run successful purely because they only work in trending markets um, and you'll get chopped a lot um, in other markets. So. Uh, treat it information if it's not clear. But once you've been in the markets for a short while, you should be able to read what the trend is. So Dow theory, quite useful. Understand higher highs and higher lows. So, yep, that's an uptrend. You know, every time we're making slightly higher and the pullback is not as low as the previous one. So understand that those are paving stones of technical analysis that still have value today if you're always wondering what trend is this. Okay. Uh, my rule of trading is that markets move 20% 20, 20 of the time fundamentally and 80% technically. Would you agree with that statement? No, I don't agree with that statement at all. Um, markets move for perceived fundamentals by the industry uh, participants. The technicals are what are drawn by fundamental players. So the technicals are the same thing, essentially. In other words, by essence, we are looking at a... a a chart, it's God's handwriting on the wall of those people that usually respond fundamentally. Um, so the big market players, the big banks will do things because they've chosen to interpret um, that which Draghi might have said today. So that will be fundamental response because it's based on news. That's what fundamentals is. However, prior to that happening, we would have seen the markets going very quiet before he spoke. We might have seen a bit of volatility in the lead up and you might get a symmetrical triangle and then he speaks and boom, you get the break. That is just the technical manifestation, the other side of the coin of what was fundamentally happening. Um, so to say it's 80% the one and 20% the other, it's not true. It's a bit like both coins are 50% of the coin, both sides. Um, and they are actually 100% each, they overlap. Do you prefer volatile markets or quiet markets? I need both. Um, so there's a beautiful balance. It's a bit like saying, do you like night or day? We actually need both. And we need both in equal measure. Um, so there's a great beautiful balance to trading. I need, the, I need the volatility because the swing up with the massive pullback gives the geometry of the overreaction to the upside and the underreaction to the downside once everybody panics and says whoops where we could go down it's not only a one-way bet that geometry is my projection for the next move so as much as the market participants are prepared to overreact and underreact um, or overreact in the other direction they create new geometry for me to project as future targets on setups but I then need the low volatility period the quietening of them so that energy to be contained everyone to get to a point a resting point in the market and I call that the axis and the line of truth almost for that point in time of my setup before once again a new event occurring that then causes an explosive. And this, so the volatility the expansion is what suddenly, and it does give you excitement too. Even though I'm not projecting these things as being entirely evil, you have to contain them. It's fun to be on the right side of a trade where you get sudden expansive move in your favor, which just blasts right off. I mean, it's great to see your PL, especially if you've planned it, it's systemic, and you have a genuinely well managed uh, tight stop with, a, with a, a single unit of loss, however you've chosen to define that, and you gain five units. Um, and, and the target, a target met at, on a risk reward of five to one is a great result. And I need both that volatility expansiveness to give me my geometry, and I need it to tighten up again 
and go low volatility to give me my... Uh, so in terms of my strategy, I'm very happy to have both. Favour one form of charting over another, candlesticks, bar charts, etc. And if yes, why? Uh, and why do you find one more useful? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so it's the same story. Yeah, if yes, why? Why do you find it useful? So the, the way I choose to uh, show my charts is a candlestick chart. And uh, it, the reason is uh, it's slightly more demonstrative. It's, uh, I mean, there is, in fact, in terms of the information imparted, there's only four pieces of data for each candle being passed on, and it's the same for a bar tick. In other words, there's an open, high, low, and close. It's merely a discussion of representation that we're discussing here. Um, however, with the color and the bodies, I ha it helps me look at data in a slightly different way. Um, so I can see where the core trade period has been, where the extremes have been. And obviously, there's, um, I've studied various candle patterns, so engulfing patterns, shooting stars, etc., etc. So it makes certain things slightly more self-evident, spinning tops, um, and their color, um, and it made a number of tactical elements, which are pretty tactical. So trading an in a handful of candles on a candlestick pattern doesn't constitute a justification for a trade for me in terms of how selective I am. However, it does give me information when looking on my trigger time frame for whether I've made a third high or a third low and what the next likely move up could my breakout be coming. So if I see a tactically relevant candlestick, a uh, pattern that's very informative and it gives me more confidence on the possibility of a, a move. So candlesticks are my choice. Um, I recommend them and I certainly recommend reading um, a number of uh, Neeson's books on candlesticks.